Let us look at the forces that charges exert on each other. I have two objects here. If I charge them with the same kind of charge, negative charge in this case, what is going to happen? They are going to fly away. So that tells you negative charges are repelling each other. Same way if I have two positive charges, again these charges will fly away. So positive charges also repel each other. So a positive charge and a positive charge exert forces like this. Why are these two forces equal? Well, Newton's third law tells us that object A, if it pushes object B with a force F, then object B must push object A with a force F in the opposite direction. So yes, these two forces must be equal and opposite. That comes from Newton's third law. But we also know that positive charges repel each other. That's why the forces are like this. The same way, if I have two negative charges, they repel each other. And so the forces will be like that. Okay, so we can say that like charges repel. Okay, what if I have a positive charge and a negative charge? Well, if I have a positive charge and a negative charge, they will come close to each other. So what does that tell you? Positive and negative, they attract each other. So this will feel a force that way and that will feel a force this way. Equal magnitude force, that comes from Newton's third law. Okay, opposite direction, that also comes from Newton's third law. But attractive, ah, that is something that comes from the nature of electric forces. So positive and negative, unlike charges, attract. Like charges, repel. We can actually see this very easily if I have some charged objects. But if I look at this pen, this pen is a neutral object. Most things around me are neutral objects. So now comes the question, how do we charge a neutral object? So how do I charge a neutral object? Actually, it turns out to be quite easy. All you have to do is to take two different objects and rub them really well. That's all. Here I have an woolen cloth and I have a rubber balloon. Both of these are neutral. So you can see that every atom here has a plus minus plus minus. Same way every atom there has a plus as well as a minus. So equal amount of positive and negative charges. But rubber balloon likes electrons much more than wool. So the atoms in rubber balloon, they like the electrons more than the atoms in wool. So if I now take the rubber balloon and rub it all over the woolen cloth, what is going to happen is some of these electrons will jump over from the woolen cloth to the rubber balloon. So wool has now lost electrons, so it has become positively charged. Whereas the rubber balloon has got extra electrons, so it has become negatively charged. So anytime you take two different objects, two different types of atoms, when they come into close contact, some of the electrons from one of the objects can jump over to the other. Okay, why am I only talking about electrons jumping? Why can't protons jump, right? Why do only electrons jump? Well, it turns out that electrons and protons may have the same charge, right? They obviously have the same charge. But that doesn't mean that they are the same size because the mass of a proton is 2000 times the mass of an electron. They have the same charge, but the proton is 2000 times bigger. So proton is huge compared to an electron. So proton can't move that easily. The same force will make the electron run really fast, whereas the proton won't move at all. That's why the proton is at the center of an atom in the nucleus, whereas the electron is going all around it. So when you rub two objects, protons stay put in the nucleus of the atom. Electrons in the outer edge are the ones that jump from atom to atom. You must also remember that electrons are on the outer edge. So when you bring two atoms next to each other, what comes close? The outer edge and the outer edge comes close, right? So the electron can very easily jump from atom to atom. The proton cannot. That's why we always look at electrons jumping. Okay, so the electrons from the wool jump to the rubber balloon. Why didn't the electrons from the rubber balloon jump to the wool? That is because rubber balloon likes electrons much more. The technical term for likes electrons is electron affinity. Affinity means like. 
So it is just the same word actually. So electron affinity decides which way the electrons jump. Now how do I know that rubber balloon has more electron affinity than wool? People have done a lot of experiments and they have come out with an entire series. This is called the triboelectric series for different sorts of material. Tribo basically means friction. So this is frictional electricity series. These items at the top, they don't like electrons much. They are ready to give away their electrons. These at the bottom, they like electrons a lot. So the ones at the top, they are ready to lose electrons. We say that they have low electron affinity. The ones at the bottom, they have high electron affinity. They want to gain more electrons. They are very happy to gain electrons. So if I now look at wool and rubber balloon. So wool and rubber, look at it. Wool is at the top, rubber is at the bottom, right? So rubber wants to gain more electrons. Whereas wool is saying, okay, I'm giving away my electrons. So wool gives away electrons to rubber. Wool gives away electrons to the rubber. That's why the rubber balloon is negatively charged and the wool becomes positively charged. Whatever is above will become positively charged. Whatever is below will become negatively charged. By the way, if I had taken, let us say glass and silk, glass is above, so glass will become positively charged, silk will become negatively charged. Any two items here, reasonably far away, you will find that whatever is above will become positive, whatever is below will become negative. Let us look at two more, paper, plastic straw, what do you think will happen? Paper doesn't like electrons very much, right? it is ready to lose its electrons. It has low electron affinity compared to plastic straw. Plastic straw is at the bottom. So it has high electron affinity. So what is going to happen? Plastic straw is going to say, I want the electrons. Paper is saying, I'll give it. So from paper, electrons will jump to the plastic straw. So this will become negative and the paper will become positively charged. This is actually very, very easy to see. I'm going to show it to you. All I need is a piece of paper and two straws. Now these straws are neutral. Paper is also neutral. By rubbing, I am going to charge these straws. Let us now do this experiment and see. Initially, both these straws are uncharged. So if I now place this pink straw on this uh, bottle top and I bring the blue straw, nothing is going to happen because both of them are uncharged. I am now going to charge them. How do I charge them? I am going to use this paper and if I rub this paper on the straws, what is going to happen is both the straws will become negative and this paper is going to become positively charged. So both these straws are now negatively charged. And so now if I bring the blue straw close, you can see that the pink straw is running away. So let me show it to you again. I will keep it here. I bring the blue straw closer. And you can see that the pink straw is running away. In fact, I can make the pink straw keep going round and round because the blue straw, it's not touching. It is pushing without touching, even at this distance. If I bring it from that side, I can make it run around like this. So the blue straw and the pink straw both have the same type of charge, negative charge in this case. But this paper is positively charged. That straw is negatively charged. So if I bring the paper towards the straw, you can see that the straw was getting attracted. Let's see that again. I'm bringing the paper close to the straw and then the straw gets attracted to the paper. In fact, I can do this continuously. I can keep it moving. So in this experiment, we saw that when you rub these straws on the paper, the straws get negatively charged, they pull the electrons and the paper gets positively charged. Why? Because the straws are made up of plastic and plastic has more electron affinity than paper. So it wants the electrons and the paper is saying, okay, I'll give the electrons. So the electrons from the paper jump to the straw. So the paper becomes positively charged the straws become negatively charged. So this is an example of charging by friction. Now we also saw 
that these negatively charged straws, right, they push each other. So this straw pushes that straw like that. That straw also, of course, pushes this. But this straw is not going to move much, right? I'm holding it. Whereas that straw, because of the push, you saw that it started going around. So we can see very easily how like charges repel. Then we also saw that the straw, which is negatively charged, if I brought a paper, what was the charge on the paper? The paper was positively charged and the straw was negatively charged. So when I bring the paper near the straw, the paper pulls the straw and of course the straw pulls the paper, but the paper I'm holding, so it's not going to move, but the straw feels a force like this and so the straw moves towards the paper. So unlike charges attract. So this simple experiment demonstrates all of these ideas that we have learned.